Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Samar Ajawi. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa participated in the Paris Peace Forum with the French President Emmanuel Macron and several world leaders. His Majesty the King gave a speech in which he said world events affirm the importance of cooperation, solidarity and peace to bring about a sustainable, safe and prosperous life for humanity. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أصحاب الفخامة والسمو والمعالي الحضور الكرام السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أحييكم من مملكة البحرين ويسعدني أن أتوجه بخالص التحية والتقدير إلى فخامة الأخ الرئيس إيمانويل ماكرون رئيس الجمهورية الفرنسية الصديقة وشعبها الكريم متمنين النجاح لأعمال هذا المنتدى الذي أصبح منصة عالمية فاعلة ومهمة لتبادل الآراء والأفكار ولتعزيز مساعي وسبل السلام العالم إن هذا المنتدى الدولي بمحاوره المهمة والمتنوعة يمثل فرصة ثمينة للبحث عن حلول فاعلة لتجاوز التحديات التي تواجه دول العالم اليوم وفي مقدمتها تداعيات جائحة فيروس كورونا كوفيد 19 وأزمة المناخ كما يسهم في تعزيز التعاون الدولي وخاصة في مجال التطور العلمي وتحسين الحوكمة العالمية لقد برهنت الأحداث والأزمات العالمية أن التعاون الدولي الوثيق القائم على ركائز ثابتة من التواصل والتضامن والسلام ومن خلال استجابة جماعية وشراكة دولية فاعلة برؤى عصرية وأفكار متطورة تناسب الحاضر وتستشرف المستقبل هو السبيل أمام دول العالم لتحقيق أهدافها المشتركة في توفير حياة آمنة مزدهرة ومستدامة للبشرية جمعا إن أمام دول العالم استحقاقا مهما وهو الوفاء بتحقيق أهداف التنمية المستدامة 2030 التي تأثرت وتيرة إنجازها بسبب جائحة فيروس كورونا وينبغي العمل على تبني مبادرات بناءة لمساعدة الدول المحتازة على تحقيق تطلعات شعوبها للتنمية والازدهار من خلال التعاون الدولي عبر منظمة الأمم المتحدة ومن هذا المنبر الدولي نؤكد مشاركة مملكة البحرين لدول العالم في جهودها لتحقيق الأمن والسلم الدولي وبناء عالما أكثر أمنا واستقرارا وعدالة ومساواة يتمتع فيه الإنسان بحياة حرة وكريمة ومستقبل أكثر إشراقا وأملا متمنين المنتدى التوفيق والنجاح وشكرا لكم أيضا أيها الأصدقاء والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته
His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa sent a cable of congratulations to the President of the United Arab Emirates, His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan, on the selection of the United Arab Emirates to host the UN Climate Conference COP28 in 2023. His Majesty the King said, the selection of the UAE to host this important conference recognizes its pivotal role and great support to international issues and cooperation with the international community to achieve development and sustainable stability. His Majesty described the UAE landmark achievement as a success to all the GCC countries which would support their international efforts to preserve the environment and the climate, protect planet Earth, and ensure the sustainability of natural resources. And His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa sent a cable of congratulations to the Vice President of the United Arab Emirates, Prime Minister and Dubai ruler, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, on the selection of the UAE to host the UN Climate Conference COP28 in 2023. His Majesty the King said that the advanced capabilities of the UAE would ensure the success of the important conference to achieve its goals in a way that supports international efforts to protect the climate. He said that climate change represents a big challenge to the international community and all mankind, wishing the UAE further progress and prosperity under its wise leadership. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa sent a cable of congratulations to the Abu Dhabi Crown Prince and UAE Armed Forces Deputy Supreme Commander His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan on the selection of the UAE to host the UN Climate Conference COP28 in 2023. In the cable, His Majesty the King said that the achievements build on the UAE landmark strides across all fields, adding that the hosting of the conference would contribute to supporting the goals and aspirations of the international community to mitigate the repercussions of climate change and provide a suitable environment and save life as well as achieve developments and prosperity. The Crown Prince and Prime Minister, His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa sent a congratulatory cable to the President of the United Arab Emirates, His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan, following the UAE being selected to host the UN Climate Change Conference of the Parties COP28 in 2023. His Royal Highness highlighted that the UAE's initiatives furthers regional and international efforts towards achieving sustainable solutions to tackle climate change. The Crown Prince and Prime Minister, His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, sent a congrat congratulatory cable to the Vice President and Prime Minister of the United Arab Emirates and ruler of Dubai, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, following the UAE being selected to host the 28th UN Climate Change Conference of the Parties COP28 in 2023. His Royal Highness noted that the United Arab Emirates hosting of this important international event supports regional and international efforts in achieving climate security and His Royal Highness extended his best wishes to the UAE in hosting the event to achieve the climate goals and wish the UAE further progress and prosperity. And the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, sent a congratulatory cable to the Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi and Deputy Supreme Commander of the UAE Armed Forces, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan, following the United Arab Emirates being selected to host the 28th UN Climate Change Conference of the Parties, COP28, in 2023. His Royal Highness noted that the UAE's efforts in hosting the event will further strengthen the ongoing international cooperation to tackle climate change. His Royal Highness extended his best wishes for the success of COP28 and for the UAE further progress and prosperity. The National Guard Commander General His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Isa Al Khalifa held a telephone call with the Prime Minister of Pakistan Imran Khan and conveyed to him the greetings of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the greetings of the Crown Prince and Prime Minister His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa and his wishes for the Islamic Republic of Pakistan's continued progress and prosperity. Both sides discussed topics on ways to develop the bilateral relations linking the two brotherly countries and people in all fields. For his part, the Pakistani Prime Minister praised the development and progress witnessed by the Kingdom of Bahrain in all fields under the leadership of His Majesty the King and government. 
as well as praising the cooperation and mutual coordination between the two countries in international forums for the common interest of the two countries and the Islamic nation. The National Guard commander thanked the Pakistani Prime Minister for the generous hospitality during his special visit to Sindh, wishing the Islamic Republic of Pakistan and its brotherly people continued prosperity, security and stability. The Middle East Mentorship Forum, in its second edition, which concluded its activities yesterday, succeeded in attracting more than 400 participants in the region, both virtual and in attendance. The participants discussed the title of the event, making mentorship a priority in a new world, and the importance of mentorship in a completely new business world after the corona pandemic. During the forum, several recommendations were made, the most important of which is to strengthen the outputs of the guidance mentorship and training and align them with the requirements of sustainable development as mentorship has become popular globally becoming one of the most powerful and influential tools in the fields of accelerating the pace of human resource development mentorship workshops will continue at the level of the gulf cooperation council countries until january 2022 in preparation for the third edition of the forum which will be held in the kingdom of saudi arabia at the end of next year In a hopeful end to the summit, the last days saw China and the United States agree to cooperate in tackling climate change in a surprise announcement at the UN Climate Change Conference COP26 held in Glasgow, Scotland. More details in this report. Glimpse of hope popped up as the world leaders came to conclude their COP26 climate change summit. The UK is to adhere huge undertaking to overhaul its policy regarding climate change issues. You can make the difference. Over half of the UK's largest businesses are committed to completely eliminating their contribution to carbon emissions by 2050. I think it's in the, the balance. We, we had a uh, if I have to define the, where we've been in the last uh, few days, uh, we had a surge of, of activity in the, in the first uh, couple of days. Things, uh, things moved. There was the feeling of life under the, under the, under the keel. Uh, we, went, we went forward. Uh, we're now finding things uh, are, are tough. But that doesn't mean it's impossible. A pledge to present a total market capital of over one trillion was also made. Countries that fall under the UK's COP26 plan pledge to accelerate coal phase out. The UK is trying um, from um, um, its hosting of COP26 to confirm that post Brexit, post even the United Kingdom, the, the European Union, uh, the UK is playing an international role. Global Britain um, is back, um, is effective, and is um, constructively engaging with the international community. And this is an extremely important matter. Climate fighting climate change is an existential issue. Great Britain, the largest producer of offshore wind energy in the world, has more to do. They intend to break off government support for the fossil fuel energy sector overseas. Despite the UK's efforts to lead the charge, Prime Minister Boris Johnson urged all nations to pull out all the stops to limit global warming and do their part to save future generations from the effects of climate change. Challenges from the past are still alarmingly present. Wealthy countries have failed to commit to their 2009 pledge to provide $100 billion a year to help poorer regions tackle climate change. Now, as the UK Prime Minister has asked that all countries must overcome political issues and economic competition, the question remains, is this going to be a practical enterprise? or an empty promise of hope. Bara Al Azawi, Al Bahrain TV, London. The Kingdom of Bahrain's National Health Regulatory Authority has approved the emergency use of the COVID-19 vaccination, Covazin, produced by the Indian multinational biotechnology company, Baharat Biotech. Covazin, an inactivated vaccine, was recently approved by the World Health Organization and will be available in Bahrain for those aged 18 years and above. The decision follows the careful evaluation of data provided by the manufacturer, Baharat Biotech India, carried out by the NHRA's Clinical Trials Committee and the Ministry of Health's Immunization Committee. More than 26,000 people participated in the vaccine's clinical trials, which established 
that the two-dose regimen vaccine is 77.8% effective against COVID-19 and 93.4% effective against severe cases of COVID-19. Safety data indicated a low incidence of adverse side effects. The national vaccination campaign continues to witness a wide turnout of citizens and residents. The Ministry of Health announced that 1,182,852 had taken the first dose of the vaccine, while 1,147,441 had taken the second dose, and 487,063 had taken the booster dose. The Ministry renewed its call for the community to commit to all precautionary measures and take the initiative to register for the coronavirus vaccination. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of active coronavirus cases reached 287 with 45 recoveries and 27 registered new cases and no deaths. 11 of the new registered cases are expatriates and 16 are contacts of active cases. The Ministry of Health urges everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus.